Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. May 30th, 2018. The Kuna Report is powered by Kelly Financial Services. Cleaning up your financial bull. Get the peace of mind that you deserve at Kelly Financial Services. Did Chief Spreading Bull, a.k.a. Liar Watha, a.k.a. Focahontas, did Elizabeth Warren just commit political suicide? Listen now to this. This, I, uh, forget, forget Roseanne Barr. Okay? This, if this, <laughs> if you want to see absolute liberal hypocrisy, I, yai, yai. By the way, at 235, I have an incredible story for you. If you love freedom, if you love liberty, if you love democracy, if you love anything that's good and decent, you're going to have to listen to 235. It is an incredible, mind-numbing story. But first, Elizabeth Warren. Okay, my friends, as you know, the chief is already getting ready to run to become the Democratic nominee for president in 2020. She is taking Jeff Deal for granted. She is taking the November 2018 election for granted. She believes it's all in the bag. And she's now plugging a book because she believes a book is going to help her with the Bernie Sanders moonbat wing of the Democratic Party. So she thinks of herself now as Bernie in pantsuits. OK, with a little bit of a Cherokee Indian thrown in. So think Bernie, Cherokee Indian, and you've got Elizabeth Warren. She's now peddling her book. Apparently now it's out in paperback. Uh, this fight is our fight. The battle to save America's middle class or this fight is our fight. The battle to screw America's middle class. That's what it should really be called. But let that go. She was on with John Dickerson, CBS This Morning, hawking her book. And that's, by the way, that's all she ever does is she's like on a glorified book tour. All she does is hawk that freaking book and try to put more money in her pocket. OK, but let that go. And so she is asked point blank about North Korea. And even Dickerson, liberal that he is, says, well, you know, the summit seems to be back on. And he got Rocket Man to release those American prisoners. And it looks like the North Koreans are talking a very different game than they did under previous presidents. Can you at least give Trump credit for that? Unbelievably, she praises communist China over our own president. Roll it, Britney. Before we get to the middle class, the yeah. economy, we have this North Korea question. There is a North Korean official apparently coming to America. You said the president doesn't look like he has a strategy, but it looks like his calling off the uh, summit last week seems to have lit a fire under the North Koreans. That three hostages had been released, so maybe there is a strategy. You know, look, North Korea is a bad actor. We understand that. Uh, and uh, the president had already promised that they could have a meeting with the President of the United States, something that both uh, Kim Jong-un's father and grandfather had long, long sought. Then it's been back and it's been forth. I want this to work. I want this to work to reduce the, the threat to South Korea, to Japan, to our allies in the region, to the United States of America, to the entire world. But it really takes a strategy. And I look at the comparison with China, Look at what China's doing. China's got the long-term arc, and it's playing everybody. It's playing North Korea, it's playing South Korea, it's playing the United States of America, because it has a long-time whole-of-government strategy that keeps driving toward an end. At this point, who knows what's coming out of Washington? And look, like I said, I hope it all works. Whoa, ho, ho. chief, chief, Brittany. Roll it back a little bit. This is the part. I don't know how she gets out of this one. A long-term whole-of-government strategy? And that's why China's strategy is better than ours? Play it again. Play it again, Brittany. 
I want this to work to reduce the, the threat to South Korea, to Japan, to our yeah. allies in yeah. the region, to the United States of sure. America, sure. to the entire world. Everybody. But it really takes a strategy. And I look at the comparison with China. Look at what China's doing. China's got the long-term arc, and it's playing everybody. It's playing North Korea, mm. it's playing South Korea, mm. it's playing the United States mm. of America, mm. because it has a long-time whole-of-government strategy that keeps driving toward an end. That is incredible. A, a long-term whole-of-government strategy, what she's saying, and there's no, getting ri there's no getting around this, and by the way, and I know why she's saying this, because I know what she reads. She reads two newspapers and only two newspapers. In fact, her staff, they do the little clippings for her, okay? So they tell her what to read. She reads the Boston Globe, okay, that liberal democratic rag, and she reads the New York Times op-ed page. And what she's talking about now is she's mouthing Thomas Friedman. She's mouthing David Brooks. She's mouthing big-time columnists at the New York Times who have been praising China now for the last 10 freaking years. They love communist China on the New York Times op-ed page. And what their argument is, and this is what she's saying, is, you see, unlike us, you don't have divided government. Unlike us, you don't have divisions, you don't have checks and balances, you don't have separation of powers in China everybody's on the same page because it's a one party system it's a dictatorship and obviously in a dictatorship you better agree with the dictator in this case xi jinping or you're going to a gulag or you're going to be tortured or you're going to be off to prison so you see in china they have a long-term, quote-unquote, whole-of-government strategy. The whole government's on the same page. You see, you don't have Congress, you don't have free elections, you don't have opposition parties, you don't have Republicans and Democrats, never mind, you know, I don't know, the FBI, the Justice Department, constant leaking, CIA's covert operations. Hell, you don't have a free press in China, you see? So... They don't have that same problem like we have. They got a long-term whole-of-government strategy. This is unbelievable. She is openly praising communist China. And I want you to think about this. And it's no accident. This comment comes on the heels of a major decision made by the president of China, Xi Jinping. And what was that? He said there will be no more term limits. Xi Jinping will now be president, i.e. dictator of China, for life. So, as these idiot moonbats, led by Elizabeth Warren, the chief, are running around Capitol Hill and doing all the rounds, the talk show rounds, saying, oh, Trump is a dictator. Trump is a wannabe authoritarian. Oh, Trump is a fascist. Trump threatens our democracy. She's openly praising a communist system and a communist regime that has authoritarian rule, that has a dictator, that imprisons and murders dissidents, that crushes the free press, that destroys basic democratic freedoms. She's openly praising communist China. Are you, are you freaking kidding me? Now, let me, tell, let me be very, very honest with you, okay? I want to congratulate her for that. I do. I really do. And I'll tell you why. Because now the moon bats are finally telling us what they really think deep down. That's why I am so grateful to Trump, not only for beating Hillary. He has flushed them out of the shadows. Now they're telling us what they really believe in their hearts. Because in their hearts, we always knew they were commies. They admired Stalin. They admired the Soviet Union. They admired communist Cuba. They admired Hugo Chavez's Venezuela. You name the left-wing socialist revolution, there was the chief, there were the Democrats, there was the mainstream media. So we always knew that secretly they were communists. Secretly they do want communist rule in America if they could get it. And now they're openly praising communist China. The New York Times has been doing it now for at least a decade. 
Okay, at least a decade. The Boston Globe constantly praises communist China. So among the left, they think, hey, hey, you don't got to deal with Republicans in China. You don't got to deal with conservatives in China. You don't got you don't have divided government. You don't have separation of powers. You don't have checks and balances. You don't have the freaking Bill of Rights in China. They censor you, imprison you, destroy you, and it's one-party rule, okay? Like they want to have here in Massachusetts. One-party, democratic, mafia rule. Now she's openly praising communist China. Now, let me be honest with you. In any other state, maybe California, maybe the exception of California, okay? In any other state, that comment, she's finished. 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 You openly praise a communist dictatorship, you're gone. The question now is, how far are the moon bats willing to go to support her now? Because I'm telling you that I think, even for Massachusetts, this may be a comment too far. So I ask you, in the People's Republic of Mark Massachusetts, the fact that Elizabeth Warren is now saying she is praising communist China, will that hurt her? Or, God forbid, in Cambridge, will it actually help her? 617-266-6868. Your calls. State Representative Jeff Deal will comment next. Join Relay for Life and help the American Cancer Society fund cancer research, free rides to chemo, free places to stay near hospitals. Register or donate today at RelayForLife.org. Okay, quick text from 781. We've got Je State Representative Jeff Deal right on the line. Jeff, this is from 781. The people who vote for Warren will always vote for her. They agree with this crap. Well, joining me now is none other than State Representative Jeff Deal. Uh, he is also running to be the Republican nominee for the U.S. Senate. I believe he's going to win, but let that go. Jeff, thank you so much for coming on the Kuna Report. And I've got to ask you right out of the gate, is this a gift from the political gods? Did you ever think you would hear Elizabeth Warren on the record, tell CBS this morning she's actually praising communist China. Jeff, your reaction. Well, Jeff, thanks for having me on. I, I think this is what we've known about her for a long time, and that is, you know, they are a communist country, but this is the same Elizabeth Warren that when she kicked off a campaign to run for the U.S. Senate uh, almost six years ago, talked about the fact that we didn't build that. Anybody who owns a, a small business or works for a small business, we didn't build that. That's what she said. She said that it was government that came in and provided the roads that uh, allowed businesses to actually grow. I don't think she even understands history in her own state of Massachusetts because it was the textile mills of Lowell. It was the shoe factories in Brockton. It was the whaling capital of New Bedford that built the uh, hospitals, the schools, uh, you know, educated the kids, uh, took care of the families built the roads, you know, provided the money that built the roads. She has no idea of, of our own history in our country, especially Massachusetts. And so, again, I'll say it, uh, with a communist country like Russia, I mean, not Russia, like China that she's praising, not a big surprise that she praises them for their long-term whole-of-government strategy. I mean, it seems to be what she's all about, especially when she wants single-payer health care, which government controls your health care. You know, that's Elizabeth Warren in a nutshell. Jeff, I've got to ask you this. You, you know, you're right. China is a communist country. It's a brutal country. It's a murderous police state. It targets and persecutes religious believers. It imprisons and tortures dissidents. It has no freedom of the press. It is a one party rule, one party state. How in her right mind can she support such a brutal totalitarian regime? And in well, the I end, mean, do you think the people of Massachusetts are going to say enough is enough? Well, I wouldn't have run this race if I didn't think people were ready for a change after Elizabeth Warren's six years of doing nothing for our state. By the way, she made this comment the day after Memorial Day, and she was not in any single parade in Massachusetts honoring our fallen soldiers. Uh, and she, hasn't, she has a history of not showing up and doing Memorial Day parades to honor our soldiers. So, uh, th again, no surprise. Uh, but, you know, again, you, you're right. 
China, a country who just created a president for life, uh, Xi uh, Jinping, just got voted to basically be president forever. Okay, uh, it's a totalitarian government, and like you said, you know, uh, problems with uh, taking care of their own citizens. But then they're also known for hacking foreign countries, uh, stealing trade secrets. I mean, this is the country she's praising is a country that basically uh, you know abuses their own citizens, and then uh, is also not necessarily a good actor in the international world as well. Uh, but again, for Elizabeth Warren, uh, total government control is the way to go. I mean, she is for open borders. Uh, she's not for. Uh, you know, protecting our citizens. She wants sanctuary cities, sanctuary states in our country. Uh, so again, this should be no surprise that she was out there praising China and saying that they've got the right idea as far as how a government should run for the long term. Jeff, do you think the Democrat media, or at least a lot of the liberal leaning media in this state, are they even going to report this or are they going to try to sweep this under the rug? <laughs> well, I can tell you, I was on CNN over the weekend, and in fact, if people want to go to my uh, Facebook page, Deal for Senate, they can see the video of me on CNN. They will do anything they can to protect Elizabeth Warren. I talked about the fact that uh, she took two minority hiring positions that she, she wasn't eligible for uh, when they tried to criticize the president for uh, calling her out on that. Uh, they will protect her tooth and nail, uh, and of course you're not going to see any statements on this. In fact, uh, you know, she's she goes on only friendly media that uh, praises her all the time, so no surprise at all. The day she She's on uh, speaking to Cooner Country is the day uh, I will be absolutely shocked. <laughs> and, uh, uh, hell will freeze shocked. over. Uh, Jeff, <laughs> hell freezes over the day she comes on this show. I guarantee it. <laughs> So, look, I think the people of Massachusetts know she's done nothing to help them. In fact, the vote she's taken have only hurt people of Massachusetts. Uh, I, of course, have uh, worked with people uh, side by side with Cooner Country uh, people uh, to make sure we repealed that index gas tax back in 2014. We did it. We had our voices heard. Uh, the people of, the, of our state, of our country, need to keep government in check. We don't need a totalitarian uh, communist regime like China, and we don't need Elizabeth Warren trying to move our country in that direction. Uh, Jeff, I've only got a couple minutes left, but I want to ask you this. She's obviously peddling her book, uh, This Fight is Our Fight, uh, a plan to save America's middle class. It's she says... Now, Jeff, it's uh, on the discount racks is what I guess I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, she says that she's a fighter for the middle class. She says that she's a fighter for the 99%, that she's a fighter for working class Americans. So let me ask you, is she? Has she been championing the middle class all that time she's been in the Senate? Well, I'll tell you what, 80% uh, of Massachusetts residents got a tax cut when the tax reform passed at the end of 2017. In, unless 80% of Massachusetts residents are millionaires, uh, which I doubt they are, uh, then she hasn't been fighting for the middle class because that's who got the tax benefits. Uh, they got pay increases. They got bonuses. We've seen more people hired in Massachusetts. We've seen electric rates go down from that tax reform bill uh, for customers. It's done everything it was supposed to do, uh, help accelerate our economy, put more money back in, in uh, the middle class pockets. And here she was voting against it, proud to vote against it. Uh, in fact, says she's resisting everything in Washington, D.C. Uh, she just is going to make sure that she raises her profile to make that run for the White House in 2020, uh, you know, Massachusetts citizens be damned. And, uh, you know, again, when she was on those two uh, talk shows on, uh, on the day after Memorial Day, she mentioned Massachusetts zero times, never once mentioned our state, even though she's up for re-election here. She won't sign a pledge to fulfill the full six-year term of the Senate seat uh, because everybody knows she wants to run for president in 2020, and she wants to be out of here as quickly as she can. She put Massachusetts in the rearview mirror the day she was elected. She will never help the people of Massachusetts, whereas, again, I have a track record of working for the people for the last eight years in the legislature. I want to go down to Washington and for the next six years make sure I do the work that you need, be your voice, listen to you, and not lecture you. Jeff, I, I just want to make sure I heard you correctly. I know you've challenged her to sign a pledge that if she wins the election in November, she will serve out her full six years. Are you saying she's refusing to sign that pledge? She has never sent back our uh, pledge form that we sent to her, which I signed. In fact, she went on Meet the Press and was asked four times, four times would she fill out, fulfill the full six-year term. Never once answered the question. Just said, I'm running for, for Senate in Massachusetts. That, has not, that does not answer the question. She clearly wants to run for president in 2020. She's a... Uh, it was in Ohio just about three weeks ago, something for a Democrat candidate for governor out there. How does that help the people of Massachusetts? 
working for a Democrat candidate for governor in Ohio. The only person that helps is Elizabeth Warren with the swing state she wants to win in 2020. And that's what she's all about, is Elizabeth Warren, always putting herself first. She's in the 1%. She has no idea what it's like to be part of the working class at this point. So, you know, I want to make sure, again, people know that uh, Elizabeth Warren is not helping them, and yet I will uh, consistently work for them when I'm down there. Jeff, I've got less than a minute. I want to ask you then one final ultimate question. If you were to describe the biggest flaw of Elizabeth Warren, I know there's many. It's like, you know, it's like a, like a mosquito now in a nudist camp. You don't know where to start. But if you were, what is the biggest, what's the worst thing Elizabeth Warren has done to the people of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, in your view? Well, I mean, you know, the integrity thing aside, I would say that uh, voting against a bill called the 21st Century Cures Act uh, was probably the single most glaring uh, oversight, you know, the, the failure to help the people of Massachusetts. First of all, the bill was uh, put forth by President Obama and Joe Biden, the vice president, with cancer moonshot funding in it. Look, every it was a bipartisan bill. Democrats and Republicans liked it. Every Democrat from Massachusetts in the congressional delegation voted for it, except Elizabeth Warren. And what it did was provide not only $12 million in funding to fight the opioid crisis, but it also, um, the long-term goal is to try to stop uh, terminal illnesses like cancer and like Alzheimer's. And here she was voting against a bill that's trying to cure critical diseases that we need to end, and she voted against it. And, uh, you know, that again, Massachusetts has a lot of research hospitals that would have benefited from the funding to continue to, the fight for uh, researching these, these diseases. She voted against it, never has come out and explained it or apologized for that vote. Well, Jeff, I can tell you why she didn't vote for it, Jeff. It's not in China. They don't have it in China, Jeff. <laughs> you see, once they have it in China, then she'll vote for it here, Jeff. Well, I'll have to talk to Xi Jinping. Xi Jinping. There so she can, uh, she can look at it and say, okay, that's a success. Let's do it here. Yeah. We... By the way, she, she, you know, and Jeff, by the way, she put forth uh, a, a bill a few weeks ago saying she wants $100 billion uh, in a new bill to fund to fight the opioid crisis. Well, where were you when the $10, $12, billion, or $12 million was available to Massachusetts? You voted no. Don't say one thing and do another. It's just ridiculous. It's, it's a constant, constant grandstanding to, to benefit herself. We have been talking with State Representative Jeff Deal, hopefully the next Republican candidate to for the U.S. Senate to take on Elizabeth Warren. Jeff, keep up the good fight, buddy, and we'll have you back on again soon. Thank you, sir. Take care. Okay, take care. God bless you. 617-266-6868. Okay, my friends, your calls. And coming up next, this story, you got to hear it to believe it. It is incredible. But first, there is an update on former President George H.W. Bush's condition. Evan Heidenrich is in the WRKO newsroom with those details. What are they, Evan? 38 here on the great WRKO. Okay, tune in for the WRKO box office cue to call Thursday on the 30s at 8, 2, and 5. For your chance to win a pair of tickets to see Depeche Mode, the Global Spirit Tour, at the TD Garden on Saturday, June 9th at 7.30 p.m. For tickets and more information, visit LiveNation.com. My friends, I rarely urge everybody to listen to a segment. I, I don't like to do that. Only if it's molto, molto importante, ultra important. And the reason why I'm asking all of you to listen to this segment, if I mention England or Britain, people are going to turn the dial and say, ah, it's over the pond, has nothing to do with us. It has everything to do with us. This is now one of the most important stories of our time. And it's time to free Tommy Robinson. Who is Tommy Robinson, and why should we at Cooner Country matter? I will tell you why, my friends, because that is the future. What you are now going to listen to is the future that the progressive left has in store for us here in America. It is the end of freedom. It is the end of democracy. It is the end of liberty. It is now the twilight of freedom and democracy in England. And if we are not careful, it will come here to America. Tommy Robinson is the founder of the English Defense League. 
He is a civil rights activist. He is a free speech activist. And he is known primarily as a critic of radical Islam and massive illegal immigration. He is also a very well-known and prominent citizen journalist. If you go to England, he regularly speaks out against the rampant anti-Semitism that you are now seeing, not just in the British media, but in all honesty, in many of these Muslim communities that are, that are surging and getting bigger and bigger and bigger all the time. The persecution of gays, of lesbians, the attack, the acid attacks increasing on the streets of London, uh, the child rape that is now prevalent in some of these Muslim communities, the growing Islamization of Great Britain. And for this, he has been branded a pariah. But now, the regime's war against him has gone to a higher, almost unbelievable level. On Friday, as we were about to celebrate Memorial Day weekend, there is a massive trial taking place in Britain. I want you to listen to this. Whereby it has turned out that m groups of Islamic Pakistanis were grooming and raping hundreds of children. Because this is part of Islamic culture in the Middle East. To have sex with young girls. And to groom them to have sex with older men. It's one of the things that Tommy Robinson has been denouncing and speaking about across Great Britain. And so this notorious case is slowly making its way forward. And at a courthouse in Leeds, L-E-E-D-S, there was Tommy Robinson. Tommy Robinson was video streaming what was going on inside the courtroom. And in particular, he was only reporting what had already been reported in some parts of the so-called mainstream media. That there was this group of Pakistani men who for many years were rape grooming first and then raping young girls and the local police knew about it but in the name of political correctness in the name of not wanting to be called islamophobic they deliberately turned a blind eye tommy was simply relating what was known to many people across great britain however the judge in the case Knowing that Tommy is a prominent critic of Islam, knowing that he's a prominent free speech activist, did something that has now shocked not just the conscience of Britain, but has now sparked protests all over Europe, all over Canada, all over the United States, all over the free world. This judge unbelievably ordered that Tommy Robinson be arrested. Even though Tommy Robinson had asked the police, if I show up at the courthouse as a citizen journalist with my iPhone, which I'll be streaming to discuss the trial, is it okay? The police first said yes. But then the judge in the case ordered the police, no, 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 that was yesterday. Today, I am ordering you to arrest him. Now, it's all over YouTube. You can see it for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Tommy did not do a thing. He was civil. He was peaceful. He was literally just talking into a camera. Okay? And talking into his video phone, his iPhone. Yet the judge claimed that his very presence at the trial, or not outside the courthouse, not at the trial, outside the courthouse, was, quote, breaching the peace. That his very existence there in front of the courthouse would divide and stir up community hatred and division. That this was, quote, breaching the peace. And so Tommy Robinson, on the spot, to the shock and horror of everybody around him, was arrested. But it gets worse. They grabbed him. They threw him inside a truck. They then drove him to the back of the courthouse. Within three hours, he was arrested, he was indicted, he was convicted, 
of breaching the peace and then sentenced to 13 months in jail. No due process. And it got even worse. Not only did Tommy disappear, like in the Soviet Union, where literally dissidents would just disappear. You're just disappearing. Just, they grab you. They stick you in the back of a truck. They arrest you. You go in front of a hack kangaroo court. And boom, within three hours, you're arrested. You're indicted. You are convicted. And then you are sentenced. The judge then imposed a gag order on all of the media in Britain that they were not allowed to report, not only on Tommy Robinson's arrest, they couldn't even mention Tommy Robinson's name. They couldn't mention which prison he was at. They couldn't mention why he was arrested. The judge ordered the media to be silent about Tommy Robinson. And the media, for the most part, complied. Because they didn't want to go to jail. Now, this media gag order under tremendous withering pressure, backlash, has now been lifted. But Tommy Robinson is now in a jail in Hull. Here's the kicker. I know I'm up against it, but here's the kicker. There is a price on Tommy Robinson's head. A bounty. Muslim gang members, and they are now rampant across the British uh, jail prison system have now said they will kill Tommy Robinson. They will either cut his throat, they will shoot him, they will knife him, but they say that Tommy Robinson will not survive the 13 months in prison. His supporters and people all over Europe are now saying that 13 months in jail is essentially a death sentence. I am personally asking President Donald Trump if there was ever a time for the president to tweet about a case, about a scandal, about a crime. This is it. Tommy Robinson needs to be freed. Political correctness is totalitarianism. They want to throw us all in jail. Today, it's Tommy Robinson. Tomorrow, it will be you. Free Tommy Robinson. Save Tommy Robinson. Okay, my friends. It is now a case that has ignited and sparked populism all over the world. Massive populist demonstrations on behalf now of the dissident in Britain, Tommy Robinson. You want to know why I love the Bill of Rights? Why I love the First Amendment, why I love our Constitution, that is the only thing preventing the left here from doing what they just did in Britain to that poor man, Tommy Robinson. And so I want you to listen now. This is Tommy Robinson. You, uh, you can see it on YouTube. He's in a suit, open collar, nice shirt, walking around, talking in his iPhone about this notorious case in Leeds, Britain whereby a gang of Pakistani Muslims for years had been grooming and then raping underage girls, children, really, 8, 9, 10 years of age. And he's talking about the case, and out of the blue, the police arrest Tommy for supposedly breaching the peace. Roll it. Brittany. The, uh, I'm, I've caused a breach of peace. I'm being arrested. Yeah. But the content of what you're uh, just streaming... Just the content of what I'm streaming... Told, I'm being arrested for breach of the peace. I'm being arrested yeah. for breach of the peace. You've all watched this. You've all watched this. You've all watched this. You've all watched this. Can you get me a slitter? Can you get me a slitter? Can you just turn off your light feed? Can you get me a slitter? Turn off your light feed, please. Yeah? Do you understand what I've just said? Well, Dad, can you explain it again? Do you understand what I've just said? Calling a breach of the peace. What, what does that mean? What, what does that mean? 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 I've told the from the peace to the Uh By the way, I, you, you, obviously most of you know this, a, sol a solicitor, a solicitor in Britain is their term for a lawyer. Well, he didn't get a lawyer. He went straight to the courthouse. Boom. Within three hours. Indicted, arrested, indicted, 
convicted, uh, sentenced to 13 months in jail. By the end of the day, he was already in Hull prison. That's how quickly they moved on him. Now, England is no longer a free country. I'm not just saying that. You now have tens of millions of Britons who are now saying that. That you cannot speak out against the government. If you speak out against the Islamization of Britain, if you speak out against radical Islam, if you speak out against open borders, you are branded immediately as, quote, far right, which is what they've done with this guy, Tommy Robinson. That's far right. And that you are labeled as an extremist, hate speech, and you must, at a minimum, be completely marginalized. At worst, they will arrest you. That's what's happening in Britain. Democracy is dead. Freedom of speech is dead. Freedom is dead. And I want you to think about this. Because now what you're seeing, this is Sharia law. This is Sharia law through the back door. It is blasphemy. It is a crime to criticize radical Islam or to criticize the Prophet Muhammad or to criticize Islam. And in the Muslim world, you either are killed, tortured, or sent to prison. Well, to protect the growing Muslim community, the left now has basically said it is verboten to criticize Islam or Islamic behavior. That's why Tommy Robinson is in jail. The country that defeated the Nazis, that stood up to Adolf Hitler is now being crushed under the weight of Islamic immigration and political correctness. Political correctness and Islamic immigration are now destroying the land of Churchill, the land of Queen Victoria, the land of the Magna Carta itself. Now, I am telling you, this is our future if we are not careful and you look at England today there were protests all weekend in front of 10 Downing Street in front of the Prime Minister's office all across Great Britain all across Europe all across Canada there have been protests here in the United States free Tommy Robinson you know what the difference between the United States and Britain is we have a second amendment they don't if no one else has the guts to say it I'm going to say it do you honestly think if the citizens of Britain were armed, freeborn citizens with the right to defend themselves, with tens of millions of British subjects or British citizens owning guns or whatever, you think they would have the guts to just pull this guy off the street? This was a Soviet style disappearance. That's I'm not that's literally what the KGB did. They haul you off the street for criticizing the government, criticizing the regime, criticizing multiculturalism or, or uh, uh, liberalism. And you're, before you know it, you're in front of a judge. And before you know it, you're in prison. He is now in a modern day gulag. That's what Tommy Robinson is in. Now, I'm telling you, my friends, this is what Obama wanted for us. This is what Hillary and Elizabeth Warren want for us. You know, when Elizabeth Warren praises communist China, what she's really saying is they get their dissidents off the streets. They don't have a Jeff Cooner shooting his mouth off on WRKO. No, 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 no. In China, you told the regime's line. You told the line of the ruling class. And if you don't, you get a Tommy Robinson like they're doing in Great Britain. Actually, it's even worse. In China, it's more like 20 years hard labor, but let that go. At its core, the modern-day progressive left is not liberal. The greatest heist in human history is that the progressive left hijacked the word liberal. There is nothing liberal about liberalism. Liberal means open, tolerant, uh, defense of the individual and individual rights. It's frankly what we are. You really want to know what conservatives are? Not to confuse everybody, but we are the last liberals left. True liberals. 
classical liberals, Jeffersonian liberals. We believe in free elections. We believe in a free and open press. We believe in freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom of religion, freedom of assembly. And yes, the right to protect yourself and your family, the fundamental right of self-defense. What the left is today are Marxist socialist statists. They have co-opted the word liberal to make them seem moderate, mainstream, reasonable. They are not. They are hard left authoritarians who want to control what you say, ask Roseanne Barr, what you think, what you do, how you spend your money, how much money you can keep. And if you're Tommy Robinson, which group you can criticize, which group you can't criticize. Tommy Robinson is now a victim of the British liberal fascist state. Liberal fascism is now in the driver's seat in Britain and in much of Europe. They want to control the mother of all countries, America. We are the last line of resistance. Cooner country. It can happen to Tommy Robinson. It can happen to you. Free Tommy Robinson. I gotta go. Jeff Cooner, Boston's bulldozer. And together, my friends, we're upholding the banner of liberty and justice. God bless.